EEG, ECOG, single cell recording. Earlier, we have learned that fMRI has high spatial resolution but poor temporal resolution. There is a complementary tool which has the opposite, and that is EEG, electroencephalogram. Unlike fMRI, EEG is a much older method. It's based on the same principle that neurons are electrochemical signaling devices so that when they fire, there's a small electrical activity involved. By putting an electrode on the scalp, one can actually detect such signals. But because the signal is weak, typically we need a way to average many trials of data together to visualize it. One way to do it is to time lock the signals to an event. For an example, the onset of the visual stimulus on the screen and average the recorded signals over many trials. The resultant time course of such an activity is sometimes called the event-related potential, ERP. In a sense, this is not that much different from fMRI, which usually also focuses on average of dozens of trials rather than single trial data. The main difference between the two methods is that the electrical activity is instantaneous, unlike the sluggish bold signal, which peaks seconds after the neuronal firing. But the electrical signal is weak and very much smeared when it passes through the scalp, so spatial resolution isn't so good. We can roughly tell whether the signal comes from the front or the back of the brain or left versus right, but not a lot better unless we use some advanced mathematical methods to localize the source of the signal. But even then, the localization is far from perfect. Now then, there is a way to have the best of both worlds to record the fast electrical signals at high spatial resolution. All you have to do is open up the skull and put the electrodes directly onto the cortex. Yay! In humans, that sounds unusual, but actually it does happen. For example, sometimes patients go through open head surgery because their epilepsy may be resistant to drug-based treatments. A seizure is an uncontrolled synchrony of brain activity that spreads through the whole brain, but it usually starts in a certain location. Once the surgeons find out where the source of such activity is, it may be a good idea to surgically take out that bit of the brain tissue to prevent future seizures from happening. In this procedure, it would be good to know where the source is as precisely as possible so as to minimize unnecessary damage. This may necessitate the implantation of electrodes onto the cortical surface to monitor seizure-related activity closely. Sometimes these patients are willing to participate in research studies while having those electrodes implanted. This way of recording EEG-like signals intracranially is sometimes called ECOG, electrocorticography. When we say the spatial resolution of ECOG is good, usually it's only relative to EEG. In reality, that depends on how densely packed your electrodes are. They rarely reach the same spatial resolution of fMRI. But of course, once we're talking about intracranial recordings, one can also put electrodes into the cortex to isolate activity from single neurons. At this level, we would be talking about a spatial resolution much higher than fMRI, because within a voxel, there are hundreds of thousands of neurons, and we'll be measuring actual spikes with perfect temporal resolution. There are rare occasions where we record from single neurons in humans, sometimes called single unit recording. For example, in some epilepsy patients, but by and large, the clinical justification is not always so strong. So these are typically done in animals.